This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Now, if you're interested in this video, CuriosityStream has tons of docs that will be right up your street. There's a plethora of stuff about World War II, from submarines to a deep dive into D-Day. It's extensive. CuriosityStream is available on many platforms. as a web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, your smart TV. Pretty Pretty much everywhere. It's also available worldwide. You can get unlimited access for just $2.99 a month. And for you guys, the first 30 days are completely free if you just sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash brain food. Use the promo code brain food during the sign up process. That's a great way to support the show. It keeps us making more videos and I couldn't think of a better fit for sponsorship. So let's get into the video. After World War II, the German state was utterly destroyed. It was split in four parts, and to top it all, coming face to face with the scale of the atrocities their government and armies committed through public events like the Nuremberg Trials. This, in combination with the process of denazification, which can be seen as a large-scale rehabilitation program and the regaining of independence, albeit as two states, helped the German people in the 50s to begin looking towards the future, burying the past. It was not just a lost war, which people can accept while still feeling proud about their deeds during it, as perhaps the French used to view Napoleon's efforts, which ended in defeat, or Austria's defeats in the Seven Years' War. Rather, in this case, the sensation after the war seems to have been similar to a person regaining their senses after having committed acts of violence under the influence, akin to a crowd cheering for a football team or other such instances of mob mentality which all humans are susceptible. Naturally, given all the revelations after the war and the atrocities committed, the Germans collectively wanted nothing more than to forget and focus on new goals. First the economy, which led to the German economic miracle, and then on the foundation of the European Union, of which in the coming decades it would arguably become the bleeding country. But what about the history books in school? After all, typical, after any conflict, whether a given side is the winner or the loser, the history taught in schools tends to be colored to favor one's own people. This, however, could not happen in Germany. The reasons for this were varied, from making sure something like that couldn't happen again, and of course the scale of the atrocities on a global level and the small time gap that separates us from those events and how well documented those events are. This brings us to the broad strokes of how this particular conflict was and is taught in German schools. We should point out here that in Germany the education system is regulated not by the federal government but independently in each of the 16 states that constitute the German Federal Republic or BRD. So the way history is taught, although generally falling within the same lines, can vary a lot from region to region. For example, the choice of literature used in the various classes differs greatly not only from year to year but also from federal state to federal state. That caveat out of the way, the study of the war period and how this is viewed in Germany German schools can be generally divided into four parts. The first, the Weimar Republic. The Weimar Republic, at least its beginnings, are generally viewed positively. It is seen as a first decent effort towards democratization, despite the problems that it faced in the aftermath of World War I. The various problems culminating in the economic crisis of the late 20s and the subsequent rise of the Nazi regime are dealt with in detail, emphasizing the mistakes that would lead to the fall of the democratic system. One would say that the Weimar Republic, despite the brevity of its existence is viewed with a certain nostalgic sentiment, accompanied by the looming threat of what was to come. And that is not just the war, but the Nazis themselves and their ideology. Nazi Ideology and Atrocities Head on, the students are confronted with the crushing effects of totalitarian regimes, radical ideologies, and where these can lead. In addition to photo and video documentaries, most schools organize mandatory school trips to Holocaust memorials, usually former concentration camps. This does not only apply to history class. Students are also introduced to the works of literature tackling the issue of Nazism and ethnic hate in Europe at the time. This can include, but is not limited to, authors such as Bertolt Brecht and Thomas Mann. Additionally, Jewish voices are amplified in terms of Jewish poetry, reports from survivors, and historical documentaries focusing on the long-term consequences of hate and violence. Some of the literature choices indicate that the schools try to emphasize the aspects of humanity and also the problem of group mentality and prejudice, as seen in works such as the post-war play Andorra by Max Frisch and more recent works such as The Boy in the Striped Pajamas from 2006 by John Boyne and The Reader by Bernhard Schlink. 
They also look at the diaries of Anne Frank. Excerpts of pro-Nazi texts are also studied once the students are deemed mature enough to handle this. In this vein, excerpts from Mein Kampf are tackled in advanced history class, stressing the contradictions within the text, what contemporary citizens might have identified with, and the lack of morality therein. Interestingly, as if to complement Nazi ideology with a similar type of prejudice, the other major topic focused on intensely is that of slavery, racism, and segregation in America. The war itself. Remarkably, the details Details of the fields of war are often underplayed in German schools. A possible reason for this is that showing maps of expanding German territory during the first two years of the war and discussing their winning battles might cause encouragement of nationalistic pride, which seems counterproductive to many given the points that educators are trying to teach. Furthermore, the discussion of the details of each battle that Rommel won or lost in Africa, or the supply problems on the Eastern Front, are not vital to the analysis of the atrocities of the Nazi regime. Another more practical aspect is that already much time has been allocated to the subject of war anyway, so they cut down on the actual battles. Of course, one downside of de-emphasizing this is many German students are never really made aware of many specific military events and conquests, since most emphasis in school is put on the internal developments, theoretical or philosophical aspects, and of course on the ideology and practice of ethnic cleansing and the ruthlessness to other groups of people seen as ethnic, cultural, or political outcasts such as Jews, homosexuals, communists, etc., the result is that the military developments of war are understated as alluded to. The result is that, shockingly, many German students are actually surprised to learn things like that Germans invaded places like modern Ukraine, modern Serbia, and Greece. In contrast to these broader war strokes, resistance against the Nazi regime within Germany is heralded as an example of heroism and bravery, one such example being the siblings Sophie and Hans Scholl, members of the resistance group the White Rose. Such examples allow German students to find figures from the wartime with whom they can identify with. On this note, not every regular German who lived in the 1930s and 40s is painted as a terrible person. After all, when dealing with such a large group, as in any populace, there are plenty of good people and a percentage of bad. That said, given all that happened, a large emphasis is put on even most of the good people being complicit in the atrocities by looking away and not doing anything to stop it. Defeat in post-war the major destructions in Germany and the high cost of human lives during the war is not attributed to the Allies, but rather to the Nazi regime itself, which is being viewed as the perpetrator in starting an unnecessary war in the first place. Furthermore, most of the destruction on German soil was inflicted in the last year of the war. The obstinacy of not surrendering, even as it was clear that the outcome of the war would be negative, is seen as proof of the minimal care the Nazis expressed toward their own people. The suicide of members of the party, such as Himmler and Hitler himself, is seen seen as an act of cowardice on their part. Thus, rather unique in history, the opposing forces who were victorious are not generally seen in a negative light by those they defeated. Far from it. On that note, the occupation of the German cities by the Allied army is characterized as liberation. This is despite, of course, the fact that the Allied soldiers at the time didn't seemingly view the race to Berlin as a race to free Berlin. The choice of words, however, comes with the emphasis that by losing the war, the German people were freed from Nazism. An interesting example comes from alternative history broadcasts that contemplate a world after supposed German victory. These paint a horrific dystopia in which the Germans, as well as the occupied people would be suppressed by a ruthless Nazi regime. The 8th of May is therefore known as the Day of Liberation. Making parallels to the way the European Renaissance supposedly liberated the medieval people, the liberation as well as the denazification process led to an internal catharsis among Germans concerning Nazism. Reflecting all of this in popular German cinema, German war films, especially in the last few decades, tend to deal with the subject with honesty, showing the gradual shift to madness caused by hollow mass delusions, often in a tone more fatalistic than heroic. Therefore, they can be much deeper than a typical war movie, and if you're up for that, you might enjoy work such as the Generation War miniseries. There's also the movie The Fall, perhaps mostly known thanks to the most memeified Hitler scene ever. Of course, one major issue of all this in the way it's taught in schools and extreme emphasis placed on this period of history is the subject of imposed collective responsibility on modern Germans, even if just implied or felt, rather than ever explicitly stated. At first glance, it is good to study these events in great 
detail to make sure they don't happen again. However, an issue for Germans, of course, is the sense of collective responsibility, despite no student today, or their parents, or even potentially their grandparents, having anything to do with any of that. How much weight does the idea of original sin have? How is a person born in the 2000s responsible for the Nazi atrocities? It is still heavily frowned upon to display the modern-day German flag, despite officially and explicitly not being a Nazi symbol. On a similar note, a nationalistic display such as pledging allegiance to the flag during class every morning would have the worst possible connotations in Germany, despite being common in places like the United States. Furthermore, there is a high percentage of population with immigrant heritage. Just look at the German national football team. As you might expect from all of this, there is some concern that the German school systems may go too far with the seeming obsession with the Nazis and all the mistakes that they were making, instead of spending more time on broader history, as is more typical in other nations. Whatever one's opinion on that, as an interesting little side note, the German denazification process was considered such a success that decades later Americans sought to apply the same methodology after occupying Iraq. Unsurprisingly, that was not exactly successful. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, please do check out our fantastic sponsor, CuriosityStream. Link to them below. And thank you for watching.